Hey, this is Philip with Go Web Examples. In this video, I would like to show you how to create a new Go project, initialize a Go module in it, and what the differences between packages and modules are. Let's take a look at this example project I've made. This project has a CMD package, a server package, a to-do CLI package, a DB, HTML, and a web package. As you can see, packages are just directories in a project. And a package is a collection of source files, like these ones, that are in the same directory. All of these files have the same package web declaration, as you can see here in the server.go and in this middleware.go. The template.go file has the package HTML, so basically every Go file within a directory has the package name of the directory above it. Now, a module is a collection of related packages that live within the same project. A project typically consists of only one module with many packages. And you can see that if the project has a go.mod file and a go.sum file. This indicates this is a Go module. The go.mod file contains information about the module itself. For example, what is the name of the module, the Go version used to create the module, and what the dependencies of this module are, along with their version name. In the earlier days of Go, packages were not versioned. You couldn't import 1.5 of a package in one project and a version 2.0 in another project. So this problem was solved by introducing Go modules. The Go sum file holds information of the dependencies and their version, along with the hash for each dependency which contains all file contents hashed into a single sum, so it's temper-proof in case the author or a hoster of a package changes the content without changing the version, so you get notified if something like that changes, so it doesn't break your application without you noticing. Let's go ahead and create a new project with a Go module. We open up our terminal, navigate out of this one and create a new directory Let's call it go reddit. Now we can change directory to go reddit and open it up in our Visual Studio code so we have a clean slate. Let's close this one and open up here our terminal again. In here we can create a new go module by typing in go mod init and then the name of the module. In my case I'm going to call it github.com slash go web examples slash go reddit. Now the go module name should be a unique identifier. This for example can also be instead of github if we want to host our code on GitLab or for example Bitbucket. We can use anything we'd like. But this module name should be unique. You could even use your company name if you like so. So choose whatever you like, but make sure this package name is unique and could be accessible if you wanted to git clone it. This is handy if you write for example a library and other people want to use your code so they can use the go get command to easily grab your module. It is even possible to use a module name which is not unique at all. For example if we want to create a module that is called left pad, you could also do that. This is not recommended by anyone as it is not fetchable with a go get command since there is no package distributor like npm or packages for node and php in the go world. Packages and modules live in a distributed environment in the go world so there is no single point of failure. Also if you are not sure yet if you want to upload your module to for example github you can always change the module name in the go.mod file. So let's go ahead and enter a proper module name again. github.com slash go web examples slash go reddit. Hit enter and it will say we've created a new go module with a go.mod file. If we open it up you can see it's pretty empty but here is the module name. We could also change later if we wanted to and the version of the current go release I'm using. When the go command notices it is in a go module, it will behave a bit differently. 
each command, like go get, that grabs a dependency from a repository, it will go ahead and add it as our dependency, as this is a desired behavior. I can show you that by an example, if we wanted to go get the Gorilla Max router by typing in go get github.com slash gorilla slash max. If we hit enter, it will go ahead and download that package in the version 1.7.2 and add it to our requirements. If we go outside of a go module and do that same command again, it will also grab it and it will not add it as a dependency as the go command notices it is not within a go module. It will download it still, but in another directory. We can take a look at all the global packages we've downloaded, which are by the way unversioned, so you probably always have the latest version if you grabbed it recently. And those packages live in the home slash go slash source directory. So let's take a look at that. And in that directory, we have a GitHub folder with some packages we've downloaded. For example, here's our Gorilla Max router. And as you can see, these have no version tags whatsoever, except for this Go packaging folder, but this is for another topic. Now, if we wanted to see where our Gorilla Max in version 1.7.4 is, we can do the same, but instead of the source folder, it is in package slash mod. And here I have many packages in different versions. For example, our Gorilla Max router, which is also in the GitHub directory. And here is Gorilla Max in the version 1.7.4. But usually you shouldn't bother with these too much, as we usually do not need to work in these directories at all. Now that we've seen the go mod init command, let's take a look at the other commands go mod offers. We can see them by typing in go mod, and it will give us list of all the commands available. The download command allows you to download all the modules that are listed in the go.mod file to your local cache. This is very useful, for example, if you're working with a colleague and you're checking out the git repository, you can type in go mod download and it will grab all the dependencies and download it to the local cache. Now another command that you might use frequently is the go mod tidy command. Let's type it in and see what it does. It removed our requirement. Go mod tidy goes through all your project files and reads all the imports and compares that to the current listed dependencies. If there is any dependency which is not needed anymore, it will remove it from the dependencies. Since we have no project file in here that would use the Gorilla Max router, it cleared it up for us. So anytime you're not working with a package anymore, you can remove it from the source code, call go mod tidy and it will clear that up. Another command that might be useful for you is the vendor command. If you have any critical application that can't live with it, if the module goes down, looking at you left pad, you can vendor them. So go goes ahead and copies all the dependencies into a new vendor folder for you. So they are available even if you're, for example, without internet connection or the module is never going to pop up again on the internet. The go mod command also has another few subcommands like verify to check if the dependencies have the expected content. So it compares it with the hash in the go.sum file. You could also check why a package is required at all by using the y command and a graph command which prints the module requirement graph and then edit. But this is basically for tools or scripts to use. So usually the most frequent commands you will be using is the go mod init command, the go mod tidy command, and maybe the download command. Go is also so clever enough if you clone your repository from your colleague and you do a simple go build or go install, it will go ahead and download all the dependencies for it so you don't have to run the manual download command. Now that's basically it for the Go modules. From here on, you can start writing your Go code like you always did.